Now, as you may have heard in the news, research published today from the Chartered Management Institute has shown that the gender pay gap is even bigger than we thought. Not only do male managers earn bigger salaries than their female counterparts, when it comes to bonuses, the men get, on average, twice as much. So how do employers get away with it and what's to be done? Well, Roger Barker is Director of Corporate Governance at the Institute of Directors. Dr Petra Wilton is Director of Policy for the CMI. Petra, what lies behind these figures? Unfortunately, there's no single answer. Um, There's a lot of uh, major cultural issues that are really driving these differences. Uh, Key factor is that there's less women at the top. Uh, So we haven't got the role models and we haven't got the young women aspiring through to those positions where they're more likely to earn bonuses, and particularly in those sectors where bonuses are prevalent, such as financial services, IT industry, where we really see big discrepancies in these bonuses. So that's one issue that's driving it. Also, there is uh, still elements of... um, possibly blatant sexism and discrimination at work uh, where bonuses are very much discretionary and they are given given, uh, depending on who's who's, uh, delivering the bonuses and there's not real clear clarity around whether it's about performance or whether it's uh, more money for the boys and part of the old boys club. So Roger, how are employers getting away with it because unequal pay is against the law? It is, and it really is quite shocking that this is is still happening. Um, I think the honest answer is that we don't really know. Um, There may be some good old-fashioned sexism still hanging around here. There may be other factors such as the the career patterns of women, which mean that they leave the workforce perhaps for a while, come back, and then then for some reason are are disadvantaged in terms of the bonuses they're receiving, um, even though they're at equivalent positions. It could be that perhaps women are less aggressive and less assertive in terms of demanding a higher bonus. I think also at board level, um, women are taking more and more non-executive positions, but these are generally not associated with receiving a bonus. Uh, Where women are making much less headway is in terms of executive director positions and CEO positions, and that's, of course, where the big bonuses are earned. So, so Petra, given that your figures have shown that there are men and women of equal stature and the discrepancy is there, how could a woman find out what her male colleague is getting? That, that's the big issue. It's really difficult to know what your ma- male colleagues are earning, so it's very hard to challenge. And unless you've got you know, some sense of proof, and you, you, know, you can then ask your colleague directly and be assertive and say, well, how much did you get? And see if you can get a direct answer. But if you really think they've got you know, cause that there is a difference there, you can take it to your HR department or um, back to your boss and the chief executive in the board and say, look, this isn't right, and challenge it. Or you can take it to employment tribunals where there have been increasing numbers uh, you know, of uh, unequal pay you know, against the law. So it can can be challenged, but too few people do because it jeopardises their own position within organisations. They don't want to be seen to be whinging and they actually value the job and their contribution. So, Roger, what about a requirement for equal pay audits? Well, what the government is currently proposing is that if a company is found to be transgressing equal pay legislation, then it could be required to undertake an equal pay audit by an employment tribunal. But you have to find out first, don't you? The whole point of an equal pay audit is it makes it transparent. You only find out if it is unequal by asking. Yes, and I think that you know, we, sh- we encourage companies to undertake um, equal pay audits or equivalent types of activities if they have any doubt whatsoever that uh, people are being uh, paid unfairly. I think also there needs to be more transparency in terms of pay. Um, that will help the, the, the problems that are being discussed. But and you can th- only do that with regulation, can't you? Um, Yes, you can. At the the very highest level, if you're on the board of a listed company, then there is complete transparency actually about pay arrangements, you know, that that appears in annual reports. Where I think we need more transparency is the next couple of uh, layers down the hierarchy where currently, you know, that that isn't um, transparent. How surprising is this to you, Petra? Because my understanding is that the IOD has never been terribly keen on that kind of regulation. Uh, yeah, um, yes, I'm now, obviously directors generally do come out against regulation. I think what we are seeing 
is that there's a much greater push for voluntary measures. I mean, there has been the Think Act report, which is about voluntary reporting, where 120 companies you know, have signed up and they are actually publishing their annual reports. Measures around diversity, including representation levels at senior management, as well as some are actually starting to report on pay. I mean, we are seeing that companies are doing it because it's a real business case to actually get women onto the boards and actually to pay them fairly. Otherwise, they are actually losing some really ex exceptional talent who are not coming back and not rising to those high levels. And actually, business performance studies, McKinsey, etc., show time and time again that diversity does pay and it's actually producing better returns for shareholders and investors. But voluntary measures clearly don't work. How long have we been discussing this problem? And it doesn't work. Yes, I mean, it's certainly 40 years since the Equal Pay Act, and that's far too long. Um, you know, obviously, it, you know, if we're not making inroads, we'll have to you know, support quotas and regulation as the only way forward. But it is a you know, systemic cultural issue too, and without actually changing those cultures, people always find a way around uh, regulation. We're seeing that even in the bonus cap in the city, uh, we're seeing salaries being hiked up in response to the regulation from the EU on bonuses. So often regulation will just have unintended consequences of other behaviours. We have to fundamentally change the, change the attitudes and cultures so people really believe in what they're doing and they're not just seeing it as a siloed issue. Roger, the, the, the other interesting thing that, that seems to have come out is that women begin earning an average of just under £1,000 more than men when they come into these businesses. Why does it then drop off? This is this is a very um, intractable question, and I have to say, it, this there's a common problem across a whole range of countries. Um, even the Scandinavian countries, which you normally think of as being very progressive in this way, um, you know, they, they level peg until they get uh, into their thirties, and then there is a big um, dropping off in terms of reaching reaching the senior positions and in terms of pay. So it it, it is a very complex issue, um, and I think that you know, business individual individual businesses and government have to think very carefully about how they can integrate you know family life both of men and women with um, with a business career and, and until we truly have that then we're going I think going to have this problem. Roger Barker, Dr Petra Wilton thank you both very much indeed.